He was very aggressive, uh, very sloppy drunk, very mean drunk. He'd push his body against theirs. He would grope them. There are things that she told us on camera that differ from her written statement last week. All afternoon, the little lies lying over and over about his yearbook page. I do know that if he gets to the Supreme Court, a good chunk of this country is going to think that somebody who got away with sexual assault is sitting on the Supreme Court. Ah, sexual assault, they say. New calls from legal experts tonight urging Judge Brett Kavanaugh to take action against some of those uncorroborated claims pushed in the media night after night. Allegations, Kavanaugh says, have ruined his good name. This has destroyed my family and my good name. A good name built up through decades of very hard work and public service at the highest levels of the American government. My next guest writing in a new op-ed, quote, unsolicited advice to Judge Kavanaugh, sue them all. Attorney L. Lynn Wood is a defamation law and reputation protection expert. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Ed. Now, I've heard all the allegations. You've heard them all, obviously, because it led you to write this op-ed. What do you see as most actionable? I mean, calling someone a liar, unfortunately, this is sort of uh, par for the course in Washington uh, and all over social media. But sloppy, mean, drunk, someone guilty of sexual assault without evidence, what do you see as actionable? Well, let me give you an example. When NBC made the decision to put uh, Ms. Swetnick on their air, uh, they admitted that they could not corroborate her story. That's recklessness. Uh, and when you do that, when you put someone on the air to make accusations of a heinous crime, and you have the responsibility to at least corroborate it before mm -hmm. you do, uh, then I think you ought to be held accountable for that type well, of conduct. You and I both know the New York Times you are for impacting. Sure, pardon me, but you and I both know the New York Times versus Sullivan. Uh, NBC News will come out and say, look, this is of great public interest. We were airing this, but we also said we were transparent, that we couldn't fully confirm all of this, but we were airing what she said and trying to give Judge Kavanaugh his side. What say you? I say the, the, the shout of guilty is never overcome by the whisper of innocence. NBC can try to disclaim their actions or explain them away, but it's irresponsible. New York Times versus Sullivan, I'm well aware of that mm -hmm. decision. It's not, uh, it's not easy to sue if you're a public figure to prove actual malice, but actual malice consists of publication or broadcast with a reckless disregard for truth or falsity. And I believe that any fair-minded person who saw that broadcast of Ms. Swetnick on NBC would agree that NBC acted recklessly and did not have any regard for truth or falsity. And that she, makes it actionable. And she alleged, among other things, gang rape. She couldn't quite place Judge Kavanaugh as someone who allegedly raped her, but said she was, he was there. He may have spiked the punch and all the rest. He vehemently denies it, as you suggest. But her attorney, Michael Avenatti, has been on Twitter daring you and anyone else to get involved here. Among other things, he said, if Brett Kavanaugh and his supporters are so convinced that all of the scores of women, including my client, are lying, he is innocent, he's been so wronged, his reputation has been damaged for no reason, then he should sue us all today. I hope that he does so, so we can prove the truth. A, he wants to prove the truth, and B, I assume he thinks if you open this up to discovery, a justice on the Supreme Court does not want to go, want to go through discovery in that painful process. Well, Michael Avenatti probably wants to be sued because he wants some excuse to try to remain relevant in the public eye as he uh, apparently now campaigns for I the presidency right. of the United States. Yeah, and look, uh, the burden of proof, is it, it does flip the system on its head, not unlike what they tried to do to Judge Kavanaugh in the hearing. It, it, when you file a libel lawsuit, you have the burden of proof. Mm -hmm. But in an accusation so heinous as to accuse this good man of being involved or complicit in gang rape, indecent exposure, and sexual assault, sometimes the decision uh, has to be that doing nothing is unacceptable. I don't expect yeah. Judge Kavanaugh will file a lawsuit. He's going to spend the next few years uh, hopefully writing some uh, incredible de decisions on the United States Supreme Court yeah. as opposed to being a litigant in civil lawsuits. <laughs> but that doesn't change my advice. The yeah. message should be sent. People but, should know there needs to be accountability. So how do you weigh that? Because there's a cost benefit, of course. On one hand, I hear you and I think this man says his reputation was unfairly destroyed. He should stand up. On the other hand, as you just said, if he is, in fact, confirmed tomorrow, as we expect, and we'll see if there's a last-minute snag, 
He's got a lot more important business to do. Should he be spending, I want to say wasting time, because it wouldn't be seen as a waste by you and others, but should he spend time when he's on the high court dealing with Michael Avenatti and the rest, or should he just move on? I think he has actionable uh, cases. Uh, I would recommend to him that they have merit. But the client has to decide that cost-benefit pro and con analysis. And it would be uh, totally understandable for him to put, a, put aside his right to clear his name in a court of law so that he can work for the next several years on making sure that the rights of the American public are enforced under the Constitution. I could understand the choice. But it doesn't change the fact that the public needs to know mm -hmm. that even with the Supreme Court justice, we cannot tolerate this idea of accusations that are unsupported being turned into findings of guilt. Yeah. Unsupported yep. accusations cannot be the basis for saying that someone is guilty of a crime. There's got to be due process in this country, and people don't seem to give a lot of credence to due process. I believe the people would give credence to it if the time comes where they want to rely on it to protect their reputations and the reputations of their family. I've got less than 30 seconds. Have you, you've been experienced as this, as we said at the top, have you ever seen what many have believed to be a character assassination like this? I mean, like I said, on social media elsewhere, people are attacking one another, unfortunately, all the time. But have you ever seen anything like this? It's gotten a lot worse, Ed, because of the social media, but I'll tell you what they did to Richard Jewell, what was done to uh, Gary Condon. I've had a, a list of clients where the accusations have been egregious and heinous. Uh, but I will tell you, this one probably takes the cake. This is probably the, the worst case of sustained accusations against a man with an impeccable uh, life history as an adult. I've never seen the media stoop to this level of recklessness and they need to be held accountable. If not in this case, in another case, if they do it again. A strong, they need to learn their lesson. They need to learn their lesson. Strong message tonight from L. Lynn Wood. We appreciate you coming in, sir. Thank you, Ed.